Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 75. This is the delightful, delicious show where we scour the app store and we find tips, news, tricks, and goodies, and we bundle them all up into a nice little parcel, and then we send them via, nah, no favorites. Number one. When I first heard that Beats, who's the maker of those Beats headphones that I've always considered vastly overpriced, was making an internet streaming radio app called Beats Music, I thought, oh great, just what the world needs. This is gonna suck. But after playing with the app a bit, I think I'm gonna backtrack because it's actually pretty cool. So before I show it off, keep in mind, this is a $10 monthly subscription-based model, kind of like RDO or Spotify, but I signed up for the free seven-day trial, which is fully featured. So first you tell Beats what kind of music you're into and not into with these little kind of cool genre bubbles. Then you start getting recommendations for themed stations and specific albums and artists spotlights. If you're listening to a song, you can heart or not heart. It's the Pandora model basically, it works fine. And then Beats will get smarter about what you wanna hear next based on your feedback. Couple things I think are a little odd. The main just for you tab makes sense. It's what Beats thinks I want to hear and it works pretty well. But the sentence tab is supposed to help me explain what music I want to hear in like a Mad Libs format. Okay, very gimmicky. I don't really need to feel like my music app is a comedian. Also, I can choose music that fits under certain activities. So I definitely get something like getting ready to go out music or chilling out music. But what the hell is punching walls supposed to be? Starting a riot? Yeah, no. Now I'm an RDO subscriber, which I chose over Spotify way back when because I just think that the app is better. I won't deny, Beats is a really nice looking app too. It's well designed, there's some cool bells and whistles, but nobody really needs to pay for two streaming music apps that generally have the same library. And there's no real incentive for me to switch. However, I think you should give the free week trial a whirl. Number two, we got a couple duh tips this week that I've just gone ahead and decided will go into a single i5 slot because there really aren't any rules here. Let's break some. Let's start with duh tip exhibit A. Sam writes, hey Sarah, I just wanted to let you know that in multitasking you can scroll through apps at two speeds. Swiping on the card moves slower than swiping on the app's icon area. This tip also works on iPads. Well Sam, I did some testing and you appear to be correct. I guess Apple probably figures if you're swiping on the cards, you're trying to look for a specific page and you don't want it whizzing by too fast. Good catch. On to the tip. Exhibit B. Reed writes in with a tip about sports. Yeah, we put a little sports in this show. He writes, if you look up a live score, say UCLA basketball using Siri, and then leave Siri on, it will continue to tell you the latest score as it changes. Okay, now this I did not know. You might be thinking, well, I don't want Siri like squawking at me every time a score changes, but what if you're in the car and there's no radio station option? That has happened to me before, it's very frustrating. Or you're trying to keep tabs on a, a low scoring game, like a soccer game, and you just want an occasional update. You know what I think about this tip, Reed? Go! Number three. So VLC, which is the app that you simply must have if you ever receive media files on your phone that your phone can't seem to open, it's gotten a huge update. It's 100 times as awesome now, so let's talk through some of the good stuff. So VLC has G Drive integration and Dropbox streaming integration as well. It has new multi-touch gestures. It has an improved library for TV shows and audios. It has a startup tutorial. If you've ever thought, you know, I don't really get VLC, you get a little walkthrough of everything that VLC can do. Has new streaming formats and protocols that are supported and improved privacy when you're using the passcode lock to keep little trolls out of your files. 
Best of all, it's finally iOS 7 optimized. Now, in all seriousness, VLC is probably not going to win any graphics awards. It's a fantastic utility, though. It will open that weird file that somebody sent you. So install it, because it's free. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and easy way to sell your used gadgets for cash. If you've got an iPhone, an iPad, any Apple product, and you're looking to upgrade, get something new, that's what Gazelle is good for. You just tell Gazelle what you've got. Go to G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot com and tell Gazelle the condition of your item or multiple items if you have those too. Then Gazelle will tell you what it will pay you for that item. You can lock in your price and then send your gadget to Gazelle when you get your new one because once Gazelle gives you an offer, it's good for 30 days. You get a risk-free offer for your gadgets, free shipping. Then when you get paid, you might want a check, you might want it via PayPal, or an extra 5% if you go with an Amazon gift card. Payment is fast within a few days of the item being received. Those offers are good for 30 days, and Gazelle will also wipe your data for free. Gazelle's paid more than $100 million to over 700,000 customers. It's a model that works. Works well, people. Free shipping, most items qualify for a free box, and the whole process is fast. No hassle, just money. What's your iPhone worth? Or other gadget? Take a minute and go to gazelle.com to find out. Do it now, because your gadgets may lose value the longer you wait. Thanks to Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of i5 for the iPhone. Number four. So the other day, somebody sent me what looked like a really impressive watercolor painting, and I was like, wow, you're so talented. But it was actually completely app-generated. The app is called Waterlog, and it'll turn your more mediocre photos into beautiful works of art. Okay, so take this photo that I snapped of my friend RJ over the weekend. On its own, not an amazing portrait, not my best work, but check out what happens when I open up the same picture in Waterlog and then apply one of my Waterlog filters. Ooh, all of a sudden it's quite lovely. Once you find a filter that you like, you've also got an intensity dial and a few brightness controls. It's fun, I have to say, for a $2.99 app, I was more impressed than I thought I'd be. So unleash your inner Van Gogh. Well, without the insanity part. Finally, number five, our very own web engineer at Twit, Patrick Delahanty, forwarded me a very interesting duh tip, and it has to do with love. Here it is, in his words. When my Canadian girlfriend visits the US, she doesn't have a data plan. If I try to send an iMessage, it won't go through and I never see the delivered confirmation unless she's on Wi-Fi. However, I can tell my phone to send it as a text by pressing and holding on the failed iMessage and selecting send as text message. But if you do this, beware of any texting fees, particularly if you're texting a foreign number. Aha, this is a good tip, especially because even though iMessage is a lot less wonky than it used to be, it's still good to know when it is and isn't working and not have this confusion over whether or not your loved one received your sweet nothing. There's no reason to break up over a text. There's no reason to break up over text either. Don't be like that. Oh, one more thing. Last week we had Wells the surgeon asking about ways to curb most notifications but not all of them when he's in surgery. Thank you so much because I got a barrage of suggestions. I like this one particularly from Melissa who writes, how about going into do not disturb mode, put his kids in as VIPs so that their texts and emergency calls can get through. That's probably your easiest option, Wills. I think we have a winner there, hope that helps. And thanks to everybody else for all the good advice. Well, if you see or hear of any great app or trick on i5 and you want to go back over it or pass it along to a friend, you can just visit us at twit.tv slash i5. That's where all of our links live and also where you can subscribe to this show with a feed of your choice or add it to your favorite podcast app. Email us at i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5 or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane. This is i5 for the iPhone and I'll see you all next week. Sarge. It's...